Starting and Managing an Entrepreneurial Venture Continued Unit 2, Chapter 10, Lesson 4, Part 3 We've spoken a little bit in the previous lecture about the process of becoming an entrepreneur, but it's important to take a look at the tactics available to become a business owner. It's possible, of course, to start with your new idea in entirely new business that no one has done before. But more often than not, we see people pursuing one of the other routes. They might choose to purchase an existing business with existing clientele and already an established way of doing business and promising cash flow. Another attractive option is to buy a franchise. So I hope you remember when we discussed franchising, we said essentially you're purchasing the right to distribute the product or service with the help and guidelines of the original owner. And what this translates into for a new business owner is often that they're promised with a high degree of certainty that this idea will succeed. So while it can be expensive to buy into a franchise, it's also quite attractive because the rate of success is much higher. Another option is to participate in a business incubator. An entrepreneur with a new and novel idea might find that the best way for them to try and establish the idea is to find an incubator where they can have the resources such as office space and support services at their disposal. And they might also need to be mentored in terms of management or legal advice so that they can give life to this wonderful new idea that they have. Starting a franchise can be a significant financial investment with accompanying legal responsibilities. So there are some important questions that you should think about asking if this is something you're considering. Some questions that you should ask the franchiser is what sort of support do they provide in terms of marketing and training? What is the failure rate of franchisees and how long does it take to make a profit? And then of course, it's important to find out if there's been a history of litigation. If a certain franchiser has a reputation for always ending up in court with their franchisees, that's definitely something you want to consider. Some questions that you need to ask about the financing is whether or not you're going to associate or um, pick up all of the associated risks that come with this business. Have a lawyer review the agreement and give you their opinion. Can you afford the initial investment? And how much working capital is required? And then an interesting question for you to consider is, is it better to open a new franchise or take over an existing one? It might be cheaper to do that. What's also important for you to remember is that once you're into this franchising agreement, you've already decided to go along with the company. So there's a really interesting example of Burger King that has, that has made some updates to their menu. And some of their franchisees own several stores. So if they need to purchase a new milkshake machine or an ice cream maker, then they're not doing that for one store, but for every single store that they own. And because you don't have control over the menu as a franchisee, you have to be prepared for making those expenditures when the, the owner company decides that you need to do it. One way that many new entrepreneurs are starting businesses is online. Essentially, all you need is an idea, a computer, access to the internet, and there you go. The internet is really aiding in the launch of a lot of new businesses and new ventures. And there are a couple of principles to starting an online business. As with any business, you need to find your idea that caters to a market niche. To succeed in a very competitive environment, you need to find a part of the market, a niche, so to speak, that is not yet being served or is not being served well. Then you need to create a professional website. It's very important that this website should be easy to navigate. Files shouldn't take too long to load. It shouldn't be difficult to find what you're looking for. It should basically comply with all of the rules of good website design. Next, you should choose an appropriate domain name. And you could, for example, go for the name of the company, google.com or dal.com, or something that leaves you a bit more space to grow into what the business might become. Some entrepreneurs have done an interesting thing in terms of creating a new business and have gone and bought very generic domain names, such as chocolate.com or relationship.com, 
with the idea that anyone that Googles those search terms will end up at their site and that one day just selling that domain name could make their money. And then, of course, in the online world, you have to use social media to build relationships with your customers. There are different tools available here, such as Facebook or Twitter, but whatever tools you use, it's important to make sure that you are extracting value from this effort to drive sales for your business. We've spoken quite a lot about starting an entrepreneurial venture, but there are at least five distinct stages of growth that a company will go through. There's the startup phase. In this phase, the main challenges involve funding the business and tweaking the product or services to make sure that they meet customer requirements. It's also important to clarify the strategic direction of the business at this point. So the company is quite young in age and the size of the company is often small at this stage. Increasing in size and age, we see the survival part of the company life cycle. Not all firms reach the stage, but if they do, by this stage, it's a workable business entry entity, which means that the product or service has sufficient customers and there is sufficient cash flow. And of course, ideally, revenues exceed expenses. So we really want to work on the size and profitability of the business during this period and maintain our momentum for growth. The next phase is success. You can see that there's a real uptick in the size of the company at this point. So that's really great for the entrepreneur. And so it's solidly based and profitable. At this point, the founder of the business can often make a decision about whether they want to stay on or move on to their next entrepreneurial venture. They need to build the business here. And what's interesting is many entrepreneurs that were fantastic at starting the business don't have the right skill set to take it to the next level. Our next stage is takeoff. So you'll see we still have a very high slope here, but it is starting to taper off. And the key problem here is how to grow rapidly and make sure we're financing that growth. The owner has to learn an entirely new skill here of delegating because the company is getting too large for them to do everything themselves. They must make sure that they have sufficient capital to finance their growth. The last stage is resource maturity. Of course, a company could be rejuvenated after this stage with new innovations and new ideas. But when a company reaches resource maturity, it means that they've made substantial financial gains but they have lost their small and flexible size. So the challenge at this point for companies is how to maintain their growth while stimulating continuous innovation. When managing a growing business, as always, we come back to the functions of management and we start by taking a look at planning and what that looks like in the context of an entrepreneurial venture. We spoke about the business plan phase and often in the beginning stages of an entrepreneurial venture, there is no formal planning, probably, except for the business plan. But they should look at this as a living document that's likely to change and be amended as they learn and grow. They also have to recognize the value of the internet for operations. Additional planning, such as more complex or comprehensive goals, are likely to come into play as the organization progresses through the stages of growth. Next, we have organizing. This is likely to be very simple at the beginning of the organization, with quite a flat structure and everyone reporting to the owner or entrepreneur. As the organization grows, and probably by the time it reaches the success stage, the owner has to learn to delegate and decentralize some decision making in order to facilitate the growth of the business. Normally by the success phase, we see functional teams emerging and as the organization grows and reaches takeoff and maturity, teams, policies, divisions and regulations have to be drafted to chart organizational growth. In the context of managing a growing business, we look at the concept of leadership here specifically as the role of the entrepreneur to make decisions. There are countless decisions that an entrepreneur has to make. What's the domain name going to be? Do they need to reorder raw materials? Should they hire this new employee or that one? And when should they expand into a new market? And with which products? As the company grows, 
the type of decisions will become more complex, but from day one, there are several decisions that must be made with alarming frequency. The last function we take a look at is controlling. Financial control is very important from the beginning of the entrepreneurial firm's growth. But at the beginning, this can be accomplished quite simply with accounting records and probably personal supervision. But by the time the organization re reaches success or stage three growth, they will need operational budgets, more structured control, and probably computer systems that can generate statistical reports to enable their decision making.